Yeah, it's on live already. Facebook. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. So, yep, we are live now. <laughs> okay. So, so happy to uh, be with Mr. Howard tonight, and uh, we have very, very uh, a lot of information for parents who wants to know how to improve on PSLE signs. Okay. So okay, let's get all started. And uh, maybe Mr. Howard could, uh, as you all know, for those people who have not known him, so I will do a very simple introduction. All right. So actually, Mr. Howard is our is a very experienced science teacher as well as a coach in science, and he's a very interesting background. Okay, he was an international experience being a HOD science in a world-class international school. So he has a lot of uh, very good credentials. And of course, we like Mr. Howard to tell us a little bit, what are you different from other science tutors? Yeah. So, to teach character instead of those fairy tale. Correct. Mm. Then uh, I also was invited to edit some of the uh, lower primary science uh, cards, as you can see on the market. Mm. And also, uh, before COVID-19, this is a very rare opportunity. Uh, in Singapore, there's this Christian Teachers Network. So I was very thankful that uh, they invite me to do some sharing uh, on how to inspire science teachers to in integrate values uh, into the learning of science. That was conducted in uh, ACS uh, primary school. That was before COVID. So after that, the event ceased until hopefully this year they will resume. Yeah, mm, that's right. And I published this book uh, to help many students. I have the uh, book too. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah. So I, I received some uh, encouraging remarks from parents that uh, they find that even they maybe from due to distance they can't come for my regular class, but this book has helped their children uh, to enjoy learning science and they're also interesting QR code so the other thing you mentioned about what makes the difference is Uching, uh, yeah <laughs> yeah I like to do YouTube videos <laughs> oh yes I have seen all oh. so some of my students call me YouTuber I say I, I haven't reached that stage yet <laughs> yeah. but it's, it's, it's good to yeah. uh, learn from uh, yeah. YouTube because it's really you can see so yes. that's also how I teach science also sometimes yeah see yeah, yeah. Um, so these are some of my former students uh, yeah mm. So right. the other thing is, uh, I like to integrate what the nation is moving ahead. Like in this very interesting quote, they say that the great things in this world is not so much where we stand as in what direction we are moving. So as you know, Singapore is heading into drones technology. So I use actually drones flying in one of my P6 uh, science topic on uh, conversion of energy so that the child actually understand better. Like, the conversion of uh, chemical potential energy in the batteries of the drones to electrical energy to kinetic energy. Yeah, this mm. will interest them. Uh, yeah, yes. rather than just starting studying something very dry. Yeah, yes. because I think even for girls, they like to fly drones. Yeah, mm, it's more. Uh, I would say it's more trendy, uh, You know, instead of like we always have the battery operated train. Now it's drones, <laughs> right? So it becomes more fashionable yeah. in a way. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So that's why I try to connect them uh, and I use this 5M in my teaching. Yeah, so this is in summary what I use uh, material, the mm. machine. Machine means my apparatus. Media is like using YouTubes and uh, various sort of media to engage mm. them. Uh, right. And also have a purpose-driven mission to help them to understand si studying science actually help them uh, to, to develop new things and also to inspire them to question, um, to question something that maybe is a norm, like to ask the uh, question that out of the box, yeah. Mm. Because only with such questioning, uh, then our nation will progress, mm. yeah. So as you know, that like, MOE is actually very uh, task oriented. So I hope to integrate this. Uh, I call STEAM uh, So I integrate the elements of arts into the teaching of science. Mm. Yeah. All right. Okay. So yes. So I think uh, one of the few things that we are have in common uh, as coaches is uh, what I feel okay is really the inspiring thing that you talk about. You know how can we inspire the young ones to know that you know it's not just purely because of marks and grades you know but what you can do beyond science. Okay, that is what is inspiring. Uh, that is positive. Okay, and it's just not just dry. You know, just studying right. Another thing is about I think you bring out the best in the the student. 
okay, because we have been uh, partnering for many, many uh, quite a some time already. So I know you will know whether a child is benefiting uh, or they are learning well or not, and then you can give the right advice, right? Yes. Mm. Okay, so uh, maybe something about myself. So I'm a PSLE coach, okay, or study coach, where you know, uh, sometimes you know, you you find that your child is actually still not doing well despite everything you have done so that's why like yesterday i, I was on a, a, a night call you know to go to a student's place because the father said the results are horrendous okay and she has spent a lot of money okay and that's how i got involved so it, it, it depends on the child's uh, maybe the motivation as well as whether they even have learning disabilities so that's when i come in and most of the time uh yeah i will know how to help them in their weaknesses and uh, PSLE coach is because I went through yeah, PSLE with my son. So he, uh, I really coach him every subject, every section. So that's how I became a PSLE coach. Yeah, And of course, Mr. Yi also helped me uh, to find out what are those pupils that require my help as well. So thank you so much. Okay. Um, Maybe we can just uh, go on with uh, our slide, you know, like today what we're going to cover. Okay, so those, uh, okay, like I'm going to share, okay, the slide about myself, just a simple one. Okay, um, yep, okay, yeah, so I'm a study coach, okay, as well as I also, uh, Okay, like this is our slides. Okay, so I also have a YouTube like Mr. Yu. Okay, he motivates me a lot as well. And our Facebook page. Okay, so I have a lot of value to help parents and children. So I also have courses. Okay, and uh, still till the end of my life because I'm going to give uh, some webinar uh, that you know, can come to to learn. All right. And today, what we're going to learn is from Mr. Howard, he will share in depth of his teachings. Okay, that how he has done his lessons to, like, for example, understanding questions and answering using key scientific concepts. And the common mistakes, you know, which our students make and they repeated it and we should not be repeating it. Okay, so he's going to re-emphasize again. And of course, for parents here, which I thank you for coming in because you will actually know what are the problems or what difficulties that your child could be having. So I applaud the parents for coming in. And of course, I'm going to those uh, in the chat, you know, that you want to get a free gift from us. Okay, you write uh, your contact and your email address so we can capture who we actually came into the Zoom. And I also will share with you what are the tools or channels or courses that you can help a child whether it's PSLE or even skills for life okay so uh, still till the end of our life because for me I have a June holiday course that I can give you a discount and also have limited seats because I only have two days of the holidays to give this course and for Mr. Howard he actually started an intensive course and he's going to uh, just let you all know uh, this course and also this limited capacity yeah because his course always run out okay so you'll be the first to know Okay, so uh, I'm going to stop here. Yeah, so Mr. Howard can continue. Yeah, if you're sharing. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, uh, Jasleen. So uh, I will continue with my uh, screen sharing here. As you can see, uh, this slide is actually quite familiar and quite important, uh, especially those parents uh, who may be educators yourself. The Maslow hierarchy of needs. So as we understand that uh, the base level is very important, the psychological needs for our children, safety, then love, belonging, and esteem. Yeah, because sometimes, uh, you know, like the child may be underperformed, but as tutors, because we only see the child once a week, or maybe in the school a few days uh, in a week, we may not understand maybe some uh, children, they, they may have deficit in these two levels, the psychological and safety. So these are things where it's beyond our control, but we can give parents uh, advices how to enhance uh, this very important foundational needs, the safety and psychological. Yeah. So once this has been built, uh, it's quite easy to see uh, children that put in sufficient uh, diligence in their work they can improve uh, quite significantly, especially for science, because science, as you know, uh, this is what examiner look for. They want precise scientific answers and be able to demonstrate the application of concepts. So today I want to share with you uh, some of the important things uh, as parents, we can guide them to know. Because uh, from P4, 
uh, to P6. Okay, why I say P4 to P6? Because as you know, in Singapore, right, science only begins uh, formally at P3. So at P3 level, usually the, the teachers and even the HOD, they are more relaxed. Huh? They, don't, they don't want to scare the children off. Uh, they, they are more so-called tolerant <laughs> for them to make mistakes. But because for P4, it's the very important year that the child will be promoted to P5. So in fact, uh, if you have the eldest child in, in uh, P4, uh, this is something good for you to understand. Okay. From what I understand, most of the government school in Singapore, they do internal streaming at P4. Okay, what do I mean by internal streaming? So usually, uh, the SA1 and SA2 results, uh, especially for science and mathematics, will be taken into account to stream the child accordingly to what P5 classes they are in. So in the past, when I was in this school uh, teaching, there are three types of classes, high ability, mixed ability, and low ability. So generally, the school will set aside like 80 seats, can be like 40 per class. So there will be 80 top students uh, based on their science and mathematics score. Yeah, why science and mathematics? Because Singapore is a very science oriented nation and very mathematics oriented nation. Yeah, so hopefully throughout the, maybe in 10 years time, they will focus more on languages. Uh. Yeah, so this is how the economy runs. Uh. I mean, as a small nation, they want to stay competitive and uh, the decision cascade down. Uh. So today, not to worry, I would try my best to offer you some of the tips as parents. We can help our children and our students to excel in science. So as you can see here, these are the process skills MOE wanted to uh, teach the student. And by the end of P6, they should have acquired all the skill. So from the easiest level to observation, comparing, classifying, you will progress to the more uh, complicated or more advanced skill, generating possibility, evaluating and formulating hypothesis. So these are very important skills, especially for P5 and P6, the, the upper primary student. And then I will also share with you the test topic Okay, on the, on the left here, you can see uh, this sector, they are called the lower primary science. Okay, you see P3 actually has more topics because uh, in P3 is the first year where they are introduced into science. So we do like a wide spectrum, but we don't do, we don't do very deep. So they are exposed to like plants, animals, microorganisms, fungi, all this uh, at the term one. And then they progress to life cycles uh, digestive system, muscular system, uh, and magnets. And then P4. Okay, P4, uh, I do not know how many parents here are P4. Maybe you can put in the chat. And then Jesseline can help me monitor. Mm, okay, because right. P4, there are two important topics heavily tested in PSLE. Namely, they are heat topic and matter. Okay, through my analysis of past year PSLE questions, up to 10% of questions from heat uh, came out. Okay, so heat is a very important topic. Okay, then on the right here, these are the upper primary topic, P5 and then P6. Okay, it's interesting to know that actually P5 is a very challenging year. Okay, why is it very challenging? Because personally, I find the child actually have to master more topics for P5 science and P6. Okay, actually the reason is very simple. As you know, in P5, they study from January and then all the way to uh, September before the SA2. But for P6, right, most schools is finish a P6 syllabus by April. And then they do revision to prepare for the prelim. Yeah. But uh, I think this year, you can see there's some annotation here, right? This topic actually will remove in the last two year PSLE exam. So they remove living together, environment, food chain, adaptation, and all this, right? But this year is the first year they resume. No? Actually, Resume is good, yeah. For me, I find resume is good because uh, in the past two years, right, because these three topics accounted for about 33%. So how do I allocate this 33%? So from an observation, observation this 33% have been shifted to test the more difficult topics like forces and energy, which usually, uh, from my personal observation, usually girls, they, don't, they, are, they find it more difficult to answer such questions, yeah. For boys, they are more uh, flexible or more 
so-called clever in under, understanding, uh, answering those forces questions. So this year is, is something good because they will be tested the full spectrum. Yeah. So also again, maybe for those P5 parents, uh, you do take note because P5 is very important. Yeah. And uh, in fact, if a child is in P5, uh, by the end of SA2, right? Actually, the child will have mastered about 65% of the content requirement for PSLE. Yeah. In other words, P6 topic occupy only about 35% of the testing uh, testing content in PSLE paper. Yeah. So the other thing is uh, because I come across students who are actually P6 this year and a parent asked me, Mr. Yu, how come they didn't do well in the SA1? So generally, I will ask them, what was your SA2 result in P5? Okay, usually there's a strong correlation. If the P6 SA1, if their marks is less than uh, 70 marks, uh, okay, less than 70 marks, uh, there's a strong correlation they didn't master the P5 topic well, as well as the P4. So uh, what we advise the parent is uh, be humble, okay? Don't uh, a bit be humble. Let your child join Mr. U, although your child is P6, right? let your child join Mr. Use P5 class. So that the child would not uh, be overwhelmed with things that uh, that he should know but he did not know. Because if the child child joined P6 class, but there are some things that he haven't cleared the foundation, then he would have this thing like always stuck there. Yeah. So it's better that uh, because now it's in uh, coming to uh, the holiday, right? Mm -hmm. So holiday is a good time to catch up because I do design some courses, right? Uh, is for P6 student, but they are learning the P5 and P4 content as an intensive class. This is to help them to bridge the learning gap. Correct, Mr. Howard. I, I certainly agree with you. At this point, right, is yeah. I think science is, I think most of our students actually have uh, received the results for the mid year and they do not really have very good results, okay? But I will tell you, this subject is the easiest to score better. Right, Mr. Howard? Yes. yes. Yeah. So it's really uh, revising the past topics because they could have forgotten and we is the time that we need to strengthen them on yeah yeah so actually i got a real life example that students from even sap school like mgs uh, the parent agree that the child although in p6 uh, they join my p5 class for at least uh, a few months then once they master the p4 and p5 content i would uh, promote them to p6 or let's see if the p6 classes are full right I will give them additional worksheets and uh, teaching methodology to catch up the P6 topic. Yeah, because you bear in mind, uh, P PSLE test topic, right? Only about 35% are from P6. So it's wiser to master the P3 to P5. You already secure 65%. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you can see here, there's a shift of uh, weightage, right? From 2017 onwards. Uh, so there are 28 questions of MCQ. Uh, for students aiming to score AL2, right? So I will ask them to set a target of 50 marks for section A, and then they must hit about 32 marks for section section B. Yeah, at least for their next exam, which is prelim. Uh, yeah. And that is important uh, that as parent and uh, educator, we try to encourage them to do as best as possible for prelim. Because in current endemic situation, uh, we do not know whether uh, what happened during the actual exam. Because should the child fall sick during the actual exam, the prelim results will be taken into account. Yeah. This is more prevalent during last year's PSLE. Because I know that there are students, maybe due to uh, uh, COVID infection, they can't take the uh, real PSLE exam. So the prelim results will be taken into consideration. Yeah. And then this is the new uh, banding started last year. So you can see actually AL1 is actually quite difficult to achieve. Yeah, personally, I find uh, for science is quite difficult. Yeah. So uh, as parent and educator, I told, I advise you all to set realistic target. Uh. So for example, for science, right, it's quite unique. Science is only subject. Uh, they can make significant improvement for three AL jump grade. So because I have done that to help students in the past. So if you see if a child scores 74, right? Let's say in the SA1, 
uh, with guided help from now onwards, it's possible that the child can be promoted to get a AL2 within uh, because we have about 18 weeks left for science paper. 18 weeks left. Yeah, I already do the calculation. Yeah, 18 weeks. So if the child can uh, do some uh, adjustment now and the parent want the child to improve, it's, it's very possible for science. Because science is not about a concept, understanding and application. So I just show you some of the important thing. Okay, general students, they are weak in explanation. So if you can see this part, right? Explain this part. They're supposed to give reason and make something clear to, to, to the examiner. So the examiner look for key concepts. But for describe, uh, no explanation needed. So just like write down what you see. Okay, write down, write down what you observe. But for explanation, they need to give the scientific concept behind. Okay, so uh, okay, there I show you one example here. This one is talk about the water cycle. So due to the time constraint, I would just uh, do a quick run through of this. So the, the student is to describe what happened, okay? Describe what happened. So they talk about the water gain, heat and evaporate. Okay, you notice this is a suggested answer given. Eh? So water evaporate from the seawater and change into water vapor. So this is describing what happened. And the water vapor condensed on a plastic sheet above and then drips back. So you notice this one, they require them to describe. But for example, if I change this question to explain how the water was obtained, right? The student need to talk about gain heat and lose heat. So they should say that the water gain heat from the sun uh, and evaporate, and then the water, the warmer water vapor loses heat. So there's a slight difference. If the question asks for explain, they need to uh, present the scientific concept behind that. Yeah. And I think you have been saying that in the class, but some <laughs> students also didn't get it. Or this is what I feel for most of my students as well. You yeah. need to actually repeat a few times. <laughs> so it's yeah, good repeat that a few you, times. Yeah, yeah you come to the course and refresh the, the concepts again. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You see, I, I modify this question. Uh, in my this is my book. Uh, that's not that one was somebody's book. Uh. This one is I put explain how water was obtained. So if I change the describe to explain, you can see the answer is slightly different. Okay, in this situation, they need to talk about the sea water gain heat and, and evaporate. Okay, the warmer water vapor lost heat to the cooler inner surface of the plastic sheet. Okay, you notice those words which I bold, right? Are the parts where the examiner will be marking. They are looking for such thing. Okay, because the child may understand that the warmer water vapor will change into the tiny water droplet. But if the child fails to show that fail to uh, write the word, uh, loses heat to what? What is the interface, right? Then no marks will be given. All right. You got to examine, look for this thing. They want to know the child understand the concept of heat gain, heat loss. Yeah. All right. So maybe for parents here who uh, whose child has gotten back the exam paper, so kindly look at the open-ended questions. I will tell you, you can see that they are not scoring is uh, the way they actually explain. They use a comprehend, okay, what I say is a comprehension way of explaining because I've seen uh, my students do that. So I told them it's not going to get them anywhere. So we need to always remember to put in the key concepts. Yeah, thank you. So not to worry, as you see in my book, I have this QR code. Uh is to help students. So if they scan the QR code, it will lead them to my YouTube channel. <laughs> I will be explaining and <laughs> repeating for them. Mm, yeah. Thank you. Okay, another typical question. Uh, this one I like to show parents. Yeah, because you see, sometimes the right scientific concept, if you use in the wrong situation, uh, you also won't get a marks. So for here, right, you can see this capacity is a 300 ml beaker and there's 200 ml of water. So by mathematical calculation, there's 100 ml of space left. Okay, and the syringe is 50 ml. So supposedly, if the syringe is being depressed once, of course, 50 will go in, right? So can you see here, the child actually, this part, uh, air can be compressed, is actually a correct scientific concept, but used in a wrong situation. Okay, because why wrong situation? Because 50 ml of air, right, doesn't need to be compressed. Because there's 100 ml of space here. Okay, so this is this is one example. Yeah. Absolutely right. 
It's <laughs> really because air has yeah. different properties, but to yeah, choose correct. the right property to for the answer is um is really you need to have a certain like thinking skills. And I tell you a lot of uh, students that I know okay, that are weaker, they tend to imagine questions. Okay, they like to write answers that they want, but not what the question wants. So this is something we need to take note of our children. Yeah. So if you see now and modify the question now, right? If I change to push in the plunger four times, the answer will be different because four times fifty is two hundred. So how can I squeeze in two hundred mL of uh, air into one hundred mL of space? So in that situation, the child should answer: air can be compressed. So that's why I would like to bring out this very good example of the same concept, right? If you use in the wrong situation, you won't get the marks. Okay. So now the children need to be very uh, alert to see. There's been now the examiner is uh, testing whether this child can use the correct concept in the right situation. Yeah. So this is talk about uh, being uh, versatile in their understanding. Okay. Next, let me see. Yeah, okay, there's so a question the from the parent about uh, how to reduce careless mistakes. Yeah, so I also want to ask whether it's we are talking about MCQ or talking about open-ended question. So we are talking about open-ended question. Is I think Mr. Howard is trying to explain uh, wrong application. Yeah, maybe you could explain to us what do you mean by careless mistakes here? Yeah. Okay, there are different type of careless mistake. Uh, so for example, okay, generally for because the child will be able to uh, identify. For some of these questions, which I just mentioned, like, like in this situation here, this is a uh, condensation questions. So condensation evaporation question, in order to avoid careless mistake, right, in answering open-ended, the child must remind himself, have I indicated heat loss, heat gain? Because these are the things that the examiner look for. Because for condensation to happen, right, there must be heat loss. Heat loss to a, a surface with lower temperature. Okay, for evaporation to happen, the substance must gain heat from a, another heat source. Okay, and then uh, another uh, another tip yeah. I want to say is usually yeah. the student didn't read the question properly. I think what Mr. Howard has given is very good. He actually underlined the key questions, keywords like clear plastic, freezer, thin layer, and I tell you, many many children don't do that. So it becomes they are careless. They don't read. And then the important words they don't register. Am I right or not, Mr. Howard? Yeah. Yeah. So this this is a very good example. This is because this one, as you can see here, this is an actual two zero two zero PSLE science question number forty, which is the last question. Okay, for the last two years, the last question is question forty. Yeah, they actually ask the student to explain how the white solid was formed. Okay, I put this is a new situation. Yeah, because if you see this child answering right, the child actually uh, wrote uh, the. When the coldness of the sausage comes into contact with the warm air, it will condense to form a thin layer of white solid. So this student actually gets zero mark because uh, we don't talk about coldness. Okay, so we should talk about the warmer water vapor. Okay, the water vapor in the surrounding. Okay, lost heat. Okay, the, wa the water vapor lost heat to surrounding, condense to form water droplets. Okay, then subsequently, yeah. Uh, because many students this part, I can say maybe only 20% of students can write this part. Okay, the water droplet lost heat further to the frozen packaging till frozen to become the ice flakes. Yeah. So this, this step is differentiate uh, the AL1 with the AL2. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's so close, right? The yeah, AL1, so AL2. Yeah. yeah. There's another example I'd like to show you about ice cream one. Uh, the water vapor. Okay, this one also. This one also about a uh, key concept. So you notice there's a lot of water cycle questions involved for PSLV and P five. So in this case, the key concept is the water vapor with higher temperature lost heat to the air with lower temperature from the freezer, okay, and condensed to form tiny water droplets which appear as white clouds. Because the student is required to explain. Can you see the word explain? So explain, the examiner will look for key scientific concept. The examiner will look for, has the student indicated a loss heat to which surface or which surface gain heat? So this must be clearly stated. Okay, okay one more. Okay, why cannot use air? This is another question I ask student. Okay, why cannot use air? 
Okay. Because you see, uh, they learn in P5, uh, air is a mixture. Uh, also, some students, they have forgotten about the composition. So we usually like test them. Uh, 78% is nitrogen, 21% oxygen plus other gases. So if they use air, right, it means that it will become liquid oxygen or liquid nitrogen. So this part is, they must be very careful. Okay, because uh, many students lost mark because they put the word air here instead of water vapor. Okay, so water vapor is just that water vapor is water exists in a gaseous state like it's H2O. So when H2O loses heat, okay, they will, yeah, the, the gaseous water vapor when they lost heat, they will form water droplets. But if it is air, right, air has this one, uh, nitrogen, oxygen. So if they mention air, right, technically it means it becomes liquid oxygen and liquid nitrogen. <laughs> So we have to be mindful of what you actually write, especially for science. It's different things, you know, air and water vapor is not the same. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, okay, this is an interesting question. This one came out in one school's prelim paper. I find quite interesting. Okay, this student actually is a, quite a good student. I mean, good in the sense that she can score AL 2 and above, but she got the zero mark. Can you see here, zero mark? Okay, this was her answer. You can see here the question actually asked, uh, Mr. Tan took out a big bowl of ice cream from the freezer. He noticed mist forming above the ice cream as shown. Okay, explain how the mist is formed. So this mist here. Okay, if you look at the child's answer, right? Uh, the warm water vapor came into contact with the cooler surface of the ice cream, lost heat and condensed to form water droplet, which appear as mist. Actually, some school may uh, apply a more lenient marking. Okay, they may they may accept this and give the child a mark. That's why uh, in some school they uh, administer very strict standardization. So if the or the HOD or the science teacher they come to agreement uh, that this answer shouldn't be awarded a mark, uh, then they'll give zero marks. But uh, for me, I told the child actually the child you can see that the child understand the concept. Okay. Here, the child actually mentioned the warm, the warm water vapor came to contact with the cooler surface of ice cream. Yeah, but the, the school actually marked very strictly. Okay, the, the school requires a more uh, strict answer. So they, the, the child did a correction here, uh, which says that the ice cream could the air around the ice cream, which is around here. The warmer surrounding air lost heat to the cooler air around the ice cream and condense to form tiny water droplets. Yeah. So this one I can, I mean, personally, I find it's quite strict line for this school. They want the, the child to learn, learn this. So uh, in my explanation to the class, I, I do this annotation to help them. Like this is ice cream. So the surrounding air near the ice cream get cooled by this ice cream. Okay. And then the warmer water vapor from uh, the surrounding comes into contact with this cooler air okay cooler air the warmer water vapor comes in the contact with the cooler air and condense to form tiny water droplets which appear as a as a mist so that's why i wrote here the key concept the water vapor with higher temperature from surrounding lost heat to the air with lower temperature around the ice cream and condense to form tiny water droplets which appear as mist so this is a quite a I can say higher order thinking questions. Yeah. Not many students can answer this way. Most students will answer like this student, okay, this part. <laughs> so this is a, I can see the trend. Uh, maybe this year they may also test something like that in their prelim or in their actual S, uh, PSLE exam. Okay, this one also in, uh, in previous year, 2020, talk about the uh, malaria one. Uh, personally, I find sometimes in the model answers, it, it, it can be quite lengthy. Lah. Because I told my student and their parents, uh, actually the science exam uh, is actually a science exam, it's not an English exam. <laughs> so if your child has uh, some difficulty in writing long sentences, right, you can give point form. Okay, They won't be penalized eh, for science exam for uh, open-ended. Because I was a PSLE science marker, as long as the child can convey the scientific concept even in point form the child 
uh, will be given full marks. Okay, so not to worry if your child cannot write like those very beautiful sentences uh, with no grammatical error. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, because we are not marking for that. We are marking for key concepts. Yeah. So you see, actually, this one is quite lengthy. Lah. So actually, those students in my class, I uh, break down this into simple uh, point form to help them yeah, to answer these questions. It's the same question that appears in the 2020 PSRE science. Okay, the other one is communication skill. Uh, personally, I do not know. Maybe I ask Jasleen. Uh, do you have a more girls are uh, facing this type of graphic problem uh, than boys. Yes, they are actually actually I'd say most students are afraid of graphs, tables, not only boys or girls. Yeah, they, they feel that they have a lot of data to analyze. Sometimes they even just leave the question. Yeah. Oh, I mean they skip the question. Uh. Correct. Because sometimes there's not only one graph, like there's a the table. You get what I mean? So yeah. they have to analyze two things and they just give up. Yeah, so this is my experience. So, yeah, so because graphing is under communication skills, so the child actually needs to interpret what is being represented graphically into sentences and uh, mention the relationship involved. So uh, this is one thing that uh, we need to train the child in. Uh. And then also on this question, talk about the, the carbon dioxide and the lime water. Yeah, this one I will share more if the child uh, is enrolled in my class, so not to worry. And uh, I know that some parents may be enrolling your child for DSA, right? Yeah, because personally, I do train students to admit to a SST for DSA yeah, in June, uh, in June, July. So if you've got friends, children who may need extra help, uh, you can refer my training to them. Yeah, I only train students to go to SST because usually they are asking about science questions and how they respond to certain uh, uh, interviews. Uh, for SST la. yeah. So, uh, okay, this question also talk about uh, matter because earlier I mentioned to you, right? P4 they have two key uh, topics, heat and matter. So I noticed that many students have issue answering such question on matter, yeah. Which I would uh, revise with them, be in P5 and P6, yeah. Because matter is really a, a very important topic. Okay, this one, uh, I want to bring out this example uh, to encourage uh, parents uh, to let your child to see more of such diagram. Because with constant exposure, they won't have this fright. Because some students, when come to the exam, uh, wow, they see it so complicated <laughs> that they give up. Uh, they give up this thing. Yeah, but this one, you, you try to break down in, in small parts uh, to help them appreciate uh, the designer. Uh, help them to appreciate the designer who come out this this great idea to design this auto feeding machine. <laughs> okay, so I say, hey, look at here, so cute. Uh. The bird, the bird in the cage, uh, if you go for a holiday, uh, if you have a pet, uh, how you look after your pet? Yeah. So I, I, I tell them, you see, look, examine here, there's two spring here. What, what do you think the spring are for? Okay, what is this part Q here? Okay, what is this iron rod? Okay, what are these two things down here? Okay, so you try to create interest in them. Because sometimes the, the child, like, if they see the whole thing, right, they feel very frightened. You try to break down in small parts so that they can appreciate. So I say, hey, look at here. You see now, right, what are the changes? Because, you know, if you remember uh, when we were younger, right, we like to do those uh, quiz board, right? Hey, what are the different things? Uh? There are 10 things that are different in this two similar picture, right? Okay. <laughs> see the difference, is it? Yeah, see the difference, yeah. Yeah, but I think for okay to 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 be fair, as a child, they will find that it's also very complicated to understand, right? So yeah. these are a few because I I have a lot of students which are very weak, so I understand how they feel. And for parents yeah. here, you are so privileged to be here to know actually uh science. Okay, I started to have this experience when like after mid year, I saw my child's exam paper. And they, he is not answering to the question, and it was horrific. Ah, okay, so I understand how you feel. If you feel that your child didn't do well this time, okay, there's always hope, you know, really, and uh, very fast you can pick up the skills. Okay, this the, I'm very very sure of it. Okay, because I was one of the parents who who picked the skills up myself and teach him. So uh, definitely, Mister Yu is here to help. And oh, that time I didn't know about him. Okay, so <laughs> I had to do it the hard work myself. Okay, I study the whole PSLE how they answer and I also have to learn yeah, to make them, to make him actually understand and do the same. Yeah. 
Okay, uh, for parents, uh, before I share the answer, you want to try to figure out how this thing works? <laughs> No, I think mm, at this time I want to sleep already, don't know. Okay, I want to sh- encourage you because this child, actually I was quite uh, happy that she got full marks, you know. She was the only child in the whole class get this one full marks. Yeah, so proud of her. I thought I trained her to answer the questions. Yeah, because I, I came up with the similar questions. Then I told her, don't worry, because this, if you see the handwriting is quite neat, right? It's actually a girl's handwriting. And actually this girl is quite timid when she first joined my class. So I see you, and she she hate doing such question, no? Right. Because when they see this thing of this type of diagram, right? Usually okay. girls they they either answer partly or they sometimes they give up. They don't want to answer. All right. So I'm quite thankful that this girl actually she she tried that, to answer. That, right? You know, you yeah. notice, notice she didn't give up. Right? Look at the part D. Then she cancelled everything she she rewrote. No? Can you see this part? She cancelled this thing, and then she wrote she rewrote the answer. She, yeah, this part. And then uh, she get all correct, five mark. Okay, in PSLE there's a one five mark questions. Okay, in f- there's one five mark questions that will actually uh, test test them to the limit lah, so called. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So it's good that uh, if a child can be awarded full marks uh, for a five mark question. Yeah, this one is actually a little advertisement. Uh, I hope the video can play, which I did for the child, the children last year lah. In the intensive training program, just about one minute. Yeah, we say is there supposed to be a music? Yeah, forgot to ask you. <laughs> okay, why I show that? Uh, because uh, I told the parent, uh, Kao Chang Ru Zhan Chan. Uh. <laughs> yes, I think it's I think this is very, very true. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, so they, because okay, technically speaking, uh, the science paper is a very challenging paper. They gotta finish in one hour forty-five minutes, right? So uh they gotta accustom themselves to reading the question fast, processing the data fast. And also uh, executing the answer fast, yeah, without any careless mistake, lah. So the other thing, uh, as parent, I can encourage you to do to inspire a child is to relate daily things, uh, into their science learning. So you know, Singapore always experience this haze, right, from Indonesia. So I I took this graph and told the student, you actually can, can you see? Uh, these are some of the questions. I gave the class to answer because they are also learning uh, one topic about men's and his environment. So this topic, this year will be tested also. The last two years due to COVID-19, they cancelled. So I use uh, this actual example, even the test kit, uh, ART test kit, uh, to ask some questions about testing reliability. Okay, give two reasons why uh, for such observation. So we try to engage them by giving them uh, real life examples so that they can connect science uh, with reality yeah so like i also purchased some of this uh, science kit to engage them and also uh, i was quite thankful uh, these people were from the science center they visit me asked me to give them some ideas how to engage students in primary school uh, through the use of scientific kits uh. and then this was a very uh heartening letter i received from this uh my former student, who is actually one of the COVID test kit developers in Singapore. <laughs> yeah. So uh, also for reading, because uh, I believe uh, English by reading newspaper, right? We can also integrate science learning in English and even in mother tongue. And uh, this was a book I told you uh, earlier that I have a passion to integrate character education uh, into our students' uh, education. And I do reward students who did well. Actually, this girl, she returned from overseas. So you can see that her mom was quite pleased because she jumped marks from 55 to 83. You know, is 
that's how I was quite pleased. I, I gave her a, a drone uh, to uh, encourage her. Yeah, Good. quite a quite a significant improvement. Mm. Yeah, after after just about three months with me, yeah, uh, because she joined the class after she get fifty five for SA one in P five lah. Then in SA two she jumped to eighty two. Yeah. So these were the students wow. uh, in the past. They came. They just came for my intensive training. Just a one day course. But some of these students, after the one day course, they decided to enroll uh, weekly lah. Yeah. So these were the grades uh, SA one before I I taught them, and then SA two is some of them they joined, some they didn't know they wow. didn't join. They used the book I right? published uh, to self study. Yeah. Um, yes. So is that. Awesome. Yeah. So, uh, of course, I want to end with some uh, invitation. Okay, yeah. currently, I'm quite thankful that uh, parents like Elena uh, because they sign up very early. Uh. <laughs> so they managed to secure the two days course uh, mm. for the for the kids and their friends' kids because all my two day course for June uh, for P six has been fully booked. Uh. So that's why I came up with this one. It's a one day course. Both P five and P six student they can join. Yeah, it's on the thirty first of May. Uh, during the holiday, and uh, this one I would uh, solely talk about open-ended questions to analyze those difficult questions came out in this year and last year's exam paper, so that the child can be exposed to more challenging questions. And I teach them the technique uh, how to answer according to the scientific concept required. Yeah. And then this is uh, for those students who are P five this year. Uh, they can join this uh, also during the holiday, but as I mentioned, if your child uh, score is let's say seventy and below in P six, you can also consider this for your P six child. Yeah, because I'll be revising all these topics as mentioned in the green uh, green wedding here. All these important topics, which are from P three to P five. So yeah, so this is my weekly timetable. If you are <coughs> keen, you can snapshot. actually yeah. yeah snapshot it. So. And then uh, I finished my presentation, hmm. so I will hand the time back to Jasmine. Yeah. So for those who have uh, stayed with us, okay, and then who, who want to give us a contact, yeah. So kindly give it to us. I think some of the parents has given to us, so we will contact you uh, to guarantee you a place in Mr. Howard's class. Okay. So for the benefit of the all these wonderful parents who take the time to actually learn about science, okay, I'm, I'm sure that you know, I, I feel that I'm very motivated, you no. Know? And for for me, we work together, me and Howard, is that uh, we want to even want to help parents to you never know, another kind of level because Mr. Howard is very good in his uh, coaching in science, right? But for me, I know a lot of parents have a lot of headaches and other areas. So today, I'm going to actually share with you my new course, okay? It's actually called a SAFE course, okay? Because I realized that teaching study techniques is one important aspect. But as I do more and more coaching, I find that there's a lot of different areas that we parents want to teach, but sometimes we are unable to communicate well or we just don't have time okay i would i would definitely understand especially those working moms okay so to me i actually incorporate a one day motivation camp so if more p6 sign up okay through today's okay i'm going to give you 200 dollars a discount it's actually i saw the cost usually is like 499 399 but i'm going to sell at 199 okay because especially those with p6 you know if you feel that there's more p6 students i will definitely put more s which is study I will do more motivation, but those who are like maybe younger, I will do a full course, which encourages uh, one to even organize because I feel organization is so important, Mr. Howard, do you agree? Because I find that the, they just chunk the whole worksheets, all the worksheets inside their bag, but without actually going through them and some they don't even know how to file. So actually I have a lot of demand to help children to do that. So I'm going to cover that, not only the school, also the house, the room to actually give them an idea that actually we are we are, we are also needed to teach them how to be responsible little kids, right? So F is friends, okay? Actually, during this COVID period, a lot of parents are very worried about their children, not able to find friends, or they are not able to maintain friends or lose friends, okay? And they are very troubled, okay? I, I'm not sure whether Mr. Howard, you, you have seen such cases where they are troubled by friendship and they can't concentrate and they can't study. And also lastly is emotions. I will feel that in this part, girls especially, are more affected by emotions and they are affected by things at home they are affected by uh, 
whatever happened in between them, the friends and the classmates, and they do not able to concentrate and they can't study. So this is what I'm sharing, and uh, because of Mr. Howard, I really want to give more to the parents out here. So this is my uh, course, okay? And the key points is to really help them to have like what I think Mr. Howard has said about Maslow hierarchy of needs, right? If the child don't have like good emotions or they don't organize well, they are also not able to do their best in school, right? So this is why I feel it's important. I have this course and there's a lot of demand. Okay, but I only have two days to do it this month, okay? So uh, attitude about studying, you know, all this. So it's very important we tell them the beliefs, especially those in P6, you know, they need to believe in themselves, set up a goal, and organization, like I said, is important. And I feel like this is actually what happened, I know, like worksheets now is very nicely packed. So this is the real life case that you now my student did, okay? And friends, you know, how to choose friends, what are the character that you should be building to attract friends. And this is so important, that these are life skills, right? And emotions, what are the strategies, you know? What can we do if, if people bully us, you know, or, or, or we are get you know, scolded by our, our friends all the time, well, what should we do? And I think this is why I want to bring that uh, importance, not only just in studying, but also in the very all-rounded view of our child's health, mental health and physical and well-being. So parents, uh, these are all the testimonials and they usually engage me after the course, like a, a regular coaching with their children because uh, sometimes it's very difficult to talk to them on certain topics and they get angry and that's why I come in, okay? So, uh, so this course is, uh, you have to just go to this link and once you apply, we'll WhatsApp you to see what is a good time and we can, uh, if there's a good number, we can go to Mr. Howard's centre, okay? And we conduct the class over there, okay? And uh, um, my number is here, and those who, people who need a study coach, you can let me know as well, okay? So these are, uh, what are deliverables will be really the hands-on writing, okay? Uh, you will get it as well as, you know, we, we really do hands-on filing. And also we have a lunch, and of course we have a report after that. You know, I will tell you a little bit more about your children, okay? And uh, yeah. We also that like this, you know, a simple report so that you know they you actually understand more about your child. Okay, this is what I want parents to know. Understand more about your child and what is their own strength, weaknesses. And the parents tell me and they don't know so much about their children. So I'm really happy to do this course. And that's all. Okay, so uh I can yeah, so we'll contact you if anybody is interested in my course or uh Mr. Hall's course, just leave your contact, we'll contact you after this uh webinar or tomorrow, okay? Thank you so much. Any questions? Yeah. For parenting Parents, or have any questions? signing questions? Yeah. <laughs> first paper, I would say, among all the four papers. Maths was once, was always been the toughest, but science, it became, uh, I think over the years, it became even tougher. I mean, uh, I see the scores of these, of my students really, uh, it's concerned, uh, you know, that's why uh, we're very willing to teach and over the Facebook Live. No more questions? Yeah. No more questions? Thank you very much for your precious time, parents. So I wish you all the best. Enjoy your holiday. Do also spend time to maybe book some staycation to de-stress your children. Yeah, bring them out. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Okay. Or go for hiking. It's very, very uh, good. I, uh, one of my hobbies is a uh, weekly hike. Yes. And cycling. <laughs> Just your time. Uh. I think it is, it's very nice to have your time. That's important. Mm. Okay. Good night, everyone. Good night. Hey, good night. Thank you, Elaine. Thank you. Bye bye. Lee, Thank you, Elaine. Susie. Thank you, Thank you Susie. Valerie. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Lynn. Tom. Yeah. Bye bye. Okay. Okay, we will stop the recording. Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay.